This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 50. Hello, and welcome to the double-sized 50th episode of Comic Geek Speak. This is Lena Taylor of the I Read Comics podcast, and for the first part of this 80-page giant, I'll be your host for a very special look back at Comic Geek Speak as they unite the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. Another one from Brian Deemer. Welcome to the show. We're glad you're with us here. I'm Brian Deemer. I am Peter Rios. X-Men. Fire Superman. Bat Colossus. The Phantom. We got a geek of the day. We can be sexy bitches too. Like me fanboy. How did you first get into comics? This is Comic Geek Speak. We love them. ComicGeekSpeak.blogspot.com It's just so entertaining. Longtime listeners know the story behind the creation of Comic Geek Speak. How co-host Brian Deemer called up co-host Peter Rios in hopes of starting a podcast to share their enthusiasm for all things comics. But, as those same long-time listeners already know, that first episode, which lacked proper equipment, didn't exactly light the world on fire. Judge for yourself. I read an interview with New Rama first time. Before the show started. I hear good things. Hear... Utterly fascinating. Eventually, they got their act together and on the air. But what exactly were we listening to? It's a big J. Uh, it's a big Green Lantern time here with the reborn and yeah. all this stuff. So rebirth, rebirth, reborn. You know, same thing. <laughs> Welcome. What the hell are you doing, Peter? You're banging around the microphone. The mic and it just all Some kind of amateur over there. <laughs> Jeez. But the the address, uh, the the web. Uh, what the hell am I trying to say? Yeah, it's like right around the yeah, whole saga. I mean, it's the Hobble Goblin. Yeah, I mean, it's... Did Hob- I say Hobble Hobble Goblin. Hobble Goblin. Hobble Goblin. Hemo Goblin. Hemoglobin. Yeah. Excuse me, guy. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, I'm Peter Rios. Uh, Peter, uh, you uh, have some problems with your... Uh, Throat there. Yeah. I'm Peter Rios. Oh, I just like, turned 13 <laughs> yesterday. I'm like Peter oh. Brady on the one Brady Bunch <laughs> special. No, 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 no. One of our listeners, uh, Tom, goes by Mr. Fusion on our message boards and on our blog and everything. I just <laughs> my voice just cracked. <laughs> Last time it was Peter Nuss, man. <clears throat> and there goes the door. Okay. Oh, oh shit. I gotta close my instant messenger. You're so professional. Welcome to our incredibly <laughs> professional show. Obviously, a cry for help. Enter the gang that would become the group of geeks that we all know and love today. Shane, toy geek who can outdo anyone in a mean game of Star Wars trivia. Who was known as Rogue Three? Wedge. What planet did the Rebel fleet gather near Solace? Whose house band included the musicians Max Rebo? I Snooty's in the Max Rebo band. Who commanded Darth Vader's flagship? Admiral Piet, Ugnut, Sarlacc, Anakin, General Veers, Obi Wan, Dooku, Palpatine. Kevin, Marvel geek who isn't afraid to hide his love for a certain silver and black costumed hero. Kevin, you have to explain to someone about Moon Knight. Moon Knight is Mark Spector, who's the uh, son of a <laughs> rabbi, the uh, Egyptian. Uh, he would deny his own Mark Spector personality, who he really was. You know, you saw all Stephen Grant and Jake Lockley, and he wasn't into, he had a confliction with his father, so he wasn't into what he did, so he went and joined the Marines. Uh, a wind came along and caught him, and, you know, and it was like, in the one moment, they actually kind of revamped a Hamlet, you know, thing with him, that he was holding the statue of Conchu's head, you know, and doing this whole scene like in Hamlet was, and uh, uh, himself was almost killed. So, can't you actually help him out there or, and uh, dress him in a silver suit? And so Moon Knight actually first appeared as a villain in the Marvel Universe, as an adversary to the Hulk. Uh, his company, who was funding the Marvel Knights, he was almost like the Tony Stark of the, of the, yeah. uh, the Avengers, um, which eventually then caught up to him yet as well. He ended up doing a lot of revolutionary wars in, in Africa and, and uh, Central America. So that was neat. I, I thought that was a really interesting thing for me, and that's what really kind of suckered me into the book. But your, your favorite issues, right, were the Stephen Platt issues, right? Absolutely. You got that now? Jamie, he'd a shiznit pimp. 
Jamie has been on a bunch of episodes now, but we never asked him the question that we asked everybody else. How and when did he start collecting comics? Oh, right. Do you remember? Are you, I know you're very old. I don't know if you can remember oh, back ow, that far. Ow. Damn. Zing. Well, he's right. Unfortunately, I can't argue with him there. Um, <laughs> back uh, when you were reading war comics during World War II? Or, uh, <laughs> Romance comics. Or yeah, okay, okay, all right, all right. We, we get you, we get you. That's, that's, that's so funny. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, Millie the model, what was that? You shut up, too. <laughs> I'm so lonely. I need a woman. And Matt, Batman fan and fountain of wisecracking one-liners. Yeah. I, I have to ask, Shane, do you even watch your kids? <laughs> <laughs> My wife would say no at times. <laughs> I hope so, he's got that Levi's jean commercial. He's probably living put in his away. mom's basement right about now. Wait, you mean like Peter? Yeah. <laughs> Watch it. That's not funny. <laughs> All right. It's not the basement. Okay, that's, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not the basement. He's on the second floor, <laughs> mind you. All right. In uh, 1952, May 21st, Mr. T was born. <laughs> <laughs> no more jibber-jabber. <laughs> we have so many listener emails. Uh, I guess I should just... What's, what, are you, what, Jamie, you're making a face there? What's going on? No, 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 no. I'm telling you to steal second. No, I, I just thought there were, I, I thought there were a couple other things we were doing special, but uh, I, I like guess what? I was misinformed. Well, I thought we, this, we were going to introduce a video game segment. Well, we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, then this is an all thing. So. Well, but now, you know, you know well, you're I stealing know. the I, thunder. I, I, I didn't show up at the sorry. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Kevin did all Take it to the Thunderdome. <laughs> Along with this group came the special guest stars who pop in now and then to share their own knowledge of comics. What would the show be like without appearances from Alex, Greek, Starblazers geek? Alex hosted a Starblazer night. <laughs> yeah, talk about geek. Yeah. That was cool. That know, was my, cool. my geekness is more powerful than all your combined. <laughs> His whole coffee table was covered with Starblazers books and international DVDs books. Right. and all this stuff. The cake put me over the edge. Yes, I realized the, that. The happy, bur- happy, happy anniversary, anniversary Yamato <laughs> cake was just <laughs> right over but the top. But I was top. surprised there was no picture of the Yamato on. I thought I thought you'd get one of those computer pictures printed on well, the I cake. Well, I had it written in Japanese. That was from the oh. computer. But. <laughs> Could you imagine being the cake person who has to make that? <laughs> happy yeah. anniversary, your mama? What? <laughs> <laughs> I actually typed it out for them. On the, you know, I printed oh, okay. it out from the computer so they, there wouldn't be any question on what I wanted because I knew there would be like someone to be like, uh. Yamawa? Scott. Powers by name, powers by reputation. Scotty? My, uh, the first comics I bought, uh, had no covers on them. It was hard for me to tell who published them. (laughs) They were all stripped off, and I bought them cheap, uh, from some guy. Um. Is that Michael Jackson? Yeah, come (laughs) in. Yeah, he only made me sleep with him. (laughs) It seemed worth it at the time. (laughs) Anything for free comics. There was no touching. <laughs> no touching. Adam, master of useless DC trivia. What is the name of Batman's son in Kingdom Come? Oh. Inal Zufash. Woo! That was quick. Son of the yeah. bat. Here's one. Uh, put the clay faces in order. <laughs> Basil Carlo, Matt Hagen, Preston Payne, and Sandra Fuller. Ooh. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's the silver wheel of Nyerland and the red jar of Kalathos, uh-huh. and the green bell of Uthu. This is all, it, wow. I have to tell the audience, he has no book, no he, notepads. No, all out of nothing. his head. Unless he has a cybernetic implant, yeah. he's, he's just pulling this stuff out of his head. And John, soft-spoken, brain-eating zombie geek. You know, these are the slow-moving, uh, uh, they don't talk, they're not intelligent. Uh, uh, you know, you don't have any of these newer-style running zombies. Getting intelligence after a while, which is one of the things that always uh, annoyed me about some of the other comics that have come out over the years, is... You and your modern zombies. (laughs) (laughs) So your collection is basically from 1993 to today? (laughs) Pretty much, and with the help... 400 long boxes. (laughs) How many long boxes do you have now? I could probably build a house out of the long boxes, but... (laughs) (laughs) All of his furniture in his bedroom is nothing but long boxes. (laughs) Of course, no roll call is complete without mentioning the fabulous Tasha Deemer, Brian's wife and comic reading, cake making better half. I'm living the life. Yeah, that's, that's so perfect. It's, it's just, I'm ready to go home. Uh, I still, I still uh, harass him for, you know, his stuff all over the place. 
He's keep, he's contained it all to one room now, which is good. But when he lived in the, when we lived in the other house, he had all his Star Wars figures <laughs> in the kitchen in the where your dishes would be. Like, Are you serious? In the he had, like a glass <laughs> enclosed built-in like hutch thing. Like, oh, okay. All right, we have to put our dishes in here. There's not there's no room for them, so you're gonna have to oh. put your Star Wars figures away. There there went my single guy pad. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. 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 We decided that that's gonna the whole Sesame Street series is gonna be my collection now. So yeah, she, until we have kids, anyway. She's been bugging me that oh, I have to. I need to collect something too because you collect a whole room full of crap. And it's like, hey, whatever you want. And to round out the Deemer clan, well, let's just say they can speak for themselves. Properties outside of the Marvel universe, such as uh, Brian. <laughs> Bendis, oh, hello there. Okay, us there pardon for a that interruption. We just got a <laughs> knock at the door, and the dogs are going crazy. This is like the Pee Wee Herman show when the doorbell would ring. <laughs> a new guest. So much for professionalism. That <laughs> shot right to hell now. Uh, anyway. Every year I go, in the last couple of years, I've gone uh, to England. To go oh, pa- to wait, Tom, we got to interrupt. The dogs are having a seizure here. And just, we'll just, okay. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. They're like the unofficial mascots of our... Yeah. Oh. Okay, the coast is clear. Now, you were saying uh, about the perks. Um, I've had... <laughs> Sounds like Tasha's home. Morte is deaf. I'm pretty sure. So something deaf. Yeah. Hey, the dog's got to bark at least once a yeah, comic yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. me nuts. Yes, Comic Geek Speak continues to grow, and just like the comic industry itself... There is no end to the topics they cover, whether it's characters. Uh, you know, I always, I just identified with the character of the Hulk, you know, the whole, like, pin-up rage, you know, type thing. And uh, So you know, we shouldn't make you mad? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you won't like, never mind. He's made a lot of characters cool, I think. I heard somewhere, I think, uh, he's, he's even made Speedball cool, I think. Speedball is You're always goddamn cool. right. <laughs> I have the bragging rights. Uh, every year we have a Halloween party. That's and right, uh, yeah. and we all have to dress up as comic book heroes. And two years ago, I dressed up as Speedball. And damn it, if I didn't look good, it looked good. You have to put pictures up, props. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll put some. I'll put. Uh, God help me, but I'll put a picture <laughs> of uh, me as Speedball on the blog. What was everybody's uh, view about? <clears throat> Jesus, what is going on? It's that damn Altoid you no, gave me. Too, mu- too much Speedball. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth full of Speedball. <laughs> writers and artists. Joss Whedon has has written exceptional stuff on some of the astounding X-Men. Astonishing, not astounding. Asto- astonishing. Whatever. Yeah, said? I just said astounding. <laughs> <laughs> I, let me t- I haven't read his Spider-Man stuff, which I'm actually stopped reading now, but uh, I think the best way to describe his stories is if I can take a line from Swordfishes, it's like masturbation without the payoff at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and I called him up. And I said, Mr. Perez. And he goes, it's Perez. And I was like, oh, oh excuse me. I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. Great way to start Yeah, it was a great introduction. And uh, he didn't know who the hell I was and how I got his number. We need a quarter jar. Yeah. Every time somebody yeah. says Perez, we need to put, start putting it instead of Perez. We need to get a quarter. A dollar. A dollar. <laughs> Come on. But reading the one article in back issue about George Perez and Marv Wolfman oh, really. Quarter. Oh, quarter. <laughs> And off the air, it's Perez, so I'm not. Oh. <laughs> See how they're getting away with that? I'll put, I'll put my quarter in. DC Titans and George Perez, all right there. Yeah. Eh, quarter in the quarter. jar. Oh, did I say Yes. Ah. Oh. It's Perez. <laughs> See? Movies and actors. Some Eastern European chick what's or something. The, what's the the chick that played in Underworld? Um, Kate Beckinsale. Oh, Kate Beckinsale. Uh, he hates fake Kate Beckinsale. Played I want A&A. somebody new. I mean, there's there's a short of a, of bad actresses out there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, J. Michael Straczynski. I I love the I love his writing. Babylon Five is one of the best uh, television series ever. And uh, so I, Babylon I, Four was pretty good though too. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and uh, he says for Selena Kyle, Catwoman, Eliza Dushku. I don't know if I'd want to see it, but I'd want to see it. You know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Oh boy. 
Oh, I totally agree that Sp- uh, Superman 2 is a better movie than Superman 1. Ugh. But there are a couple pivotal scenes in Superman 1 that just make you... make no. Give me this it's, chill up my spine. I, I, it's my list time. and I'm sticking go, all right, to fine, it. Go. <laughs> Uh, the second let, me just, let me just turn down his microphone. There you go. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is my show now. Music. Catch the pigeon. Get us out from under Wonder Woman. The force will come out tomorrow. Radioactive black belt hamsters. <laughs> Here's my favorite part. Right here. Um, listen to this. Uh, don't don't turn it off. Oh, I don't know the words. <laughs> never fail. Never fail. Listen to that. Sing, you dead bastard. <laughs> you beautiful <laughs> dead you bastard. Beautiful. I can't remember his name. What's his name? Uh, Freddie, Freddie Mercury. Thank you. Sing, Freddie Mercury, you gay dead bastard. Here we go. Jesus. Here's a football fight. <laughs> That's just wrong, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's anything wrong with that. Trivia. Little ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Stump the Rios. Who is Superman? Oh, God. Wow. Um, I need like an hour to think about that. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. God, Who knows? Clark Kent is Superman. You're right, you're right, you're right. Or other things that bring out the strongest of opinions. It's more of an adult uh, Star Trek, which I I, really I think enjoy. it'd have to be full-blown porn for me to be interested in Star Trek. It's boring. There's not enough shit blowing up. You have to watch Deep Space Nine. I watched some Deep Space Nine. That got, that got boring way. real fast. Uh, anyway. Uh, they have the, a new what they're coming out. Waha. Uh-huh. Oh, is that what it is? Well, yeah. huh? and I ain't getting it because it's like 80 million months late. Yeah, it is. F Bendis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa. Hey, now. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. A woman is somebody who watches Oprah and knits. You know, I mean, that's boring. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. They drive me nuts. It's, oh, we have to decide who to cast. You already did. You yeah. should have thought of that ahead of time, jackasses. Because the worst one is that Lisa Schwartzbaum. I just want to rip her head off if I ever see her. Every every great movie, she's a D plus or whatever. And bitch doesn't know anything about movies. <laughs> the CGS crew is by no means shy when it comes to their love of comics, and sometimes that love is even aimed at one another. We are sexy bitches, yeah. <laughs> Peter, can I just say that you you do look sexy today? Thank you, Brian. Okay. He is man pretty. That 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 is for sure. Love you, Joe. I'm going to kiss Jamie right now. <laughs> and I'm going to show you. It's, I'm going to prove to you that I'm a man, that I am comfortable with my sex. Come here, you. Come I don't, here. I'm going to get up. I'm going to kiss him right now. Come I don't want to see uh, that. Come here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm ready for Maybe it. I'm, gonna... I'm comfortable, too. <laughs> Love you, Joe. Pony it up, big boy. Some other things that we... Uh... Want new, lis- new new listeners to know about our show, uh, Stump nude the Rios. List- Do you say nude listeners? Nude, nude listeners. listeners. <laughs> We're all nude right now. Uh, yeah, no. don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. That's not true. <laughs> Although with Alex, you do get nude quite often. <laughs> okay, <laughs> silence. That's, I don't even know. Every time Alex would come over to my house, at some point he would get naked. Let's move on. <laughs> it, there was that, alcohol involved. Yeah, I was going to say. There was a lot of alcohol involved. involved. Oh, yeah, I was pushing alcohol very heavily. It was Mark Grell. Uh, Mike Grell, I should say. His Mark Sable stuff is really, really nice. John, John, John Sable. Sable. Yeah, Mark Sable. Wow. Who's Mark? That's know, twice you've really named Mark. Mark. I don't Who's know. I, it's, he's my gay lover, was, okay? I'm was, sorry. Uh, Love you, Joe. Rob Liefeld's shaft, seven inches and fully posable. <laughs> <laughs> the Samuel L. Jackson shaft. Uh, Love you, Joe. I can taste it in my balls. I mean, I haven't gotten a proposal yet, so I'll take that as... <laughs> Yeah, but your sweet, sweet ass. <laughs> <laughs> I want to marry you. That's, that's the whole thing. I, 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 I'm in love now. That's you. You've, wow. You've, you've turned me on that much. Love you, Joe. Stop saying that. Regardless of orientation, CGS is there for everyone. Young, old, woman, man, gay, straight, mainstream, independent, American, Australian, human, mutant, or Kryptonian. 
Romani ite domun. Klatu. Klatu bararadnik to. E pluribus unum. Nanu nanu. No matter who you are, CGS is the place to be for endless comic geekery. Geek of the day. The world of toys. Book of the month club. Listener emails. Comic movie news. Uh, Brian would appreciate a postcard as well. Coming attractions. A podcast crossover. Important dates in the comic industry. And so, without further ado, here's Kevin Moyer. And then you treat it that so so superficially, you know that. So what? Superficially, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super <laughs> <polycontroversy. Yeah. laughs> You know what I meant. Shut up. Shane Kelly. Jamie D. Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's a rainstorm, okay? Peter Rios. So imagine, you know. You're going in the bedroom trying to be romantic, and I'm gazing up at these <laughs> pictures. The Crisis poster, and <laughs> Perez Avengers, and, <laughs> and I'm going, wow, I love George Perez. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Deemer. I need an ice cream sandwich, Brian. <laughs> Brian, a I, must, witch. I must buy an ice cream sandwich. Get chip witch, Brian. And the rest of the gang as they present Comic Geek Speak, episode 50. This is Lena Taylor signing off. wing. Thanks, boys. It's been freckin' swear. Okay. Peter, that was awesome. Thanks. That was incredible. That's for everybody here in the room. Golf clap. Yes, very, very good job. Welcome to episode 50. And thank you, Lena, for for that wonderful... uh, introduction now. yeah it was, it was great selena my would-be girlfriend <laughs> <That's right. laughs> if only you lived in san francisco yes <laughs> if only well hey uh, uh i'm brian deemer i'm matt i'm john i'm shane kelly i'm kevin moyer i'm jamie d i'm peter rios and of course i don't have the sound <laughs> pile <of you>. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right we are sexy bitches yeah yeah, baby. yeah. <laughs> uh. Wow, I can't even, you know. That, that's it. Good night. We're done. <laughs> Show's over. We shot our lead. <laughs> I got to go get some tissues. Wipe the tears from laughing my ass off. It's yeah. funny what you forget oh you said. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Throughout I'm the like, course of 50 years. I'm a very episodes. angry person, aren't yeah. I? <laughs> I'm no. sitting. I got to no. really be careful what I say from now on. <laughs> what did you deduce that from? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, my, fav- my favorite is Brian. That bitch doesn't know anything about movies. <laughs> yeah. That's my absolute favorite one. I went through and listened to it, and I went, Boy, this is all Brian. I got to come up with something else. I couldn't find anybody else. Uh, things that I, I knew there were some things I wanted, but I couldn't find them. And then I found like another thing. But we that would have been, yeah. <laughs> been all you. We contained. That would have been all you. Wow, funny. That was great. Yeah, that was fun doing doing that. That's worth doing another fifty episodes. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> totally. that's what I said to him. One of those. I said I got to start now though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. Make your make wow. your job a lot easier. I, I do have to ask: Is this the special edition where we make the announcement that none of us have ever read comics and everything we know actually comes <laughs> off the internet? Yeah, we're all just faking it. <laughs> this, is our, this is our own identity crisis right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> Episode fifty. This wow. is what we've been waiting for. All I actually had a hard time sleeping last night because really? I was so excited about recording this episode today. Is that ridiculous or what? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> nah, that's the cool. General, the general consensus Where's is the cake? Yes. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, no episode oh, 50 cake. Oh, <laughs> no uh, speedball cake? Denied. I thought it'd be neat to have decorate with little different color speedballs yeah. all over it. and have it. <laughs> <laughs> Choke on some speedball again. Oh, God. <laughs> a little speedball in our mouths again. <laughs> so, Peter, what should we do first? <laughs> Why don't we do, uh, let's do some stuff. Strippers. Let's do some emails. Let's just go normal for a while. I was hoping for some strippers. I thought for sure. Damn it. Get some normalcy into this episode before we hit the big stuff. I could have pulled out stuff. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's good when you have friends who are bouncers at strip clubs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hello, I'm here for the geekery. What? (laughs) I got a cute little sexy pair of Spider-Man undershorts. I don't want to see that. I bought from... Hot Topic one time? I think I'm wearing Spider-Man underwear right now. Well, those aren't the ones I bought, I can guarantee you. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you guys... But then again... I might have some of Wonder Woman's. (laughs) We're giving you sound clips. You're giving me fodder for next (laughs) time. Oh, you bet. (laughs) We may be doing one every episode. No holds barred. Hey, all right. This one, the... uh, 
the subject is greetings from Antarctica. Whoa, it's nice. Nice. Okay, country. that's a lie, yeah. but you were oh, <laughs> but you were headed for your world domination map with that's a handful right. of stick pins and a highlighter, weren't you? <laughs> I was figuring the uh, penguins were fun. <laughs> that's right. This is from uh, Chris McDonald in St. Louis, Missouri. Close enough. A distant suburb of Antarctica, he says. <laughs> uh, now that you guys are <coughs> cough famous, I figured I had to really sell that subject line in order to get you to read my email. The podcast is awesome. I know that the show is going to be San Diego, San Diego, San Diego for a while. I'm looking forward to everything. The every, I'm looking forward to everything the panel will mine. Oh, the panel will mine from your experiences out of out in Pleasantville. Well, and this is how old this is. We're long <laughs> since done talking about San Diego. <laughs> this was this was sent to us July 12th, and you it's now like August oh, 25th. All these yeah. listeners are like, <laughs> man, those bastards said they'd read everything, and they ain't reading. We shit. Are, well, no, 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 we are no, reading. I, I, know, I know. We just didn't say when. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your show on independent titles was the best yet, and not because I am myopic about indies, but you did mention Matt Wagner's classic Mage along with Invincible. So you uh, are all the collective shiznit. Your comic foo is powerful, and your pimp hands eternally strong. I have no idea how you guys manage to keep the quality so high whilst being so prolific, but I'm so glad you do it. I had actually already started typing this email when the show, through my headphones, you took off on your hilarious sidebar about the creation of pointless cheesecake female characters. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you about. As a show topic, after all the Comic-Con stuff has run its course, have you considered addressing your favorite cheesecake artist storylines and titles? Particularly salient renderings of traditional female characters from the Marvel and DC catalog that made you say, Howdy! I'll always have a soft <coughs> cough spot for Dave Stevens' too short run of Rocketeer and his depiction of Betty Page as a sultry siren, who after much research turned out to be more attractive than the real Miss Page. I wanted to like J. Scott Campbell's Danger Girl more than I did, but I couldn't get past the fact that he seemed to be storyboarding the movie version before writing a decent original story. Discussing Omaha Cat Dancer and Chaikin's Black Kiss may be a little out of the mainstream family-friendly show, but my inner perv is curious as to your take on similar non-family-friendly titles and similar favorites obscura for which I should keep my eyes open, preferably a little less whacked out than Black Kiss. There's a fine line between adult and smut, and I'd love to hear the panel opine on which titles they'd stack in which category. Um, and that's stacked. from Chris. <laughs> okay. No kidding. Oh, he has a PS. He says, for those of us that don't go drinking with the panel, you briefly address the store and what your various relationships are to the store. I assume it's a comic book shop in PA. But if y'all are going to speak of it in mythological terms, can you please dish a little background? Uh, who worked there? Who still works there? Would the Demerometer characterize it as a good place or a bad place? Well, God, where do we start? I know. So much for reading emails. We'll get this one down. <laughs> we go from talking about uh, women portrayals in, uh, in comics to what we finally thought was the sex. <laughs> We're going from one end of the spectrum to the next if yeah. we, when we talk about running this. the sexual gambit. Yeah. <laughs> so who wants uh, to start? Well, cheesecake from, artist, yeah. cheesecake artist Adam Hughes. I, yeah. I love his. But what series? Covers. Any any of his covers? Oh, okay. any, anything well, he did. It's, it's just you know he's one of those consistently good you know cover artists I think, and he did he actually drew a good book too when he was drawing uh, yeah, like Maze Agency and stuff. Yeah, like that's that. that's the first book I ever saw him do was Mage Speaking Agency. Of which, I love that. We just got a press release that they're bringing back Mage Agency. Yes, they are. Cool. Which yes, is cool. Are. What Michael Michael Mike Barron is or they're collecting Barr. it. Mike Barr is no, they're, doing their new series. Oh, doing a new, series. Yeah, a new series. I think it's what four or six issues or something. Like I don't that. remember. I don't know if it's a full series. But where's, Mike, where's it coming from? Uh, IDW. I, yep. Yep. Oh. Different artists, but it's still uh, God, Mike Barr. They, they're they're Barr. picking that stuff. IDW is picking that yeah. uh, old Eclipse. and That's great. Those maze stuff. agencies were so well written. Yeah, they were. They were. It was like a mini mystery every issue. Every one. It was like, you know, it was like watching one of the TV shows and trying to figure out who done it at the end of the thing. Kind of and yeah, then. we went right, <laughs> off, <laughs> right off the topic. On yeah, the, just I, like I'm a gonna, forum. Know, <laughs> right. Just like a thread in a forum. Didn't, didn't Adam Hughes do that spread of Marvel and DC characters and wizard two-page thing? The one article it had... About the women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just every... Yeah, he's, yeah, he's done a lot of those yeah. whenever they do like a Babelicious issue. 
And it's funny because like some of his Wonder Woman covers were actually the cheese factor was uh, toned down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then there's other ones where you're like Whoa, way over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I but like the Power yeah, Girl one there just recently. Right. That was pretty good. That was a nice cover. I think Terry Dotson. Yeah, oh, certainly. And right along the same level. I mean, to yeah. me, he and he and Hughes are pretty much Frank Cho. Yeah. Oh. Frank Cho's awesome. Yep, I love Frank Cho. And it's funny that you know they, they love the women that he draws. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about that on the board on the forum, and they said I said I mentioned Shauna the She Devil, and yet um, it was a Max series, wasn't it? And yet, and yet yeah. they still edited it. They they edited it. <laughs> edited it. Edited it. Because uh, it was almost, it was too you know sh- he was sh- showing nudity and they had to totally he yeah. totally had to block all that stuff out thanks to Janet Jackson yeah <laughs> oh goddamn bo- avalanche <laughs> the FCC goddamn avalanche of <laughs> shit and you know what if Over they, they would have never said anything about and there that, wasn't even I would nipple have never saw it yeah there was nipple. Oh, she had no, one of those little, little, little star things over top of it yeah but you still well you still had to have it and pinned to something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was clamped. Yeah. No, it wasn't Clint. It was oh, Pierce, okay. actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who else? Uh, I'm, I'm still going to, even though he wasn't quite as impressed on J. Scott Campbell. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that's pick, all TNA. Pick image, any image yeah, title yeah. from 1992 to 1996. Even Jim Lee back with Gen 13 oh, yeah. and whatnot. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Mm-hmm. How those women characters fought in those thongs and those... <laughs> yeah. Little spaghetti strap tops, you know. I mean, it's it's. Well, they warp gravity around themselves, so yeah. it pushes it. You know, two thirds legs and together. one third torso. Yeah, yeah. 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 And a whole lot of willpower. Wait, Peter, I'm confused. Was that a complaint? Yes. Oh. Michael as far Turner. As art goes. Michael Turner. Michael Turner. Yeah. Definitely with Fathom. Yeah. yeah. And the Supergirl covers, I'd say. <laughs> there's some other. I know there's other ones I just can't think. I don't know. I mean, for for pure artists, you know, there are other ones like uh, Olivia and um, <coughs> Arthur, what Arthur Sudium and Louis Rios, even yeah. Boris. Yeah, I mean, those, uh, Julie yeah. Julie Bell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they do some nice stuff too. Um, as far as he was talking about, like Omaha, the Cat Dancer, and Black Kiss, I've I've you know partaken in those those books, and those are. I read actually some Omaha good. Cat Dancer I mean, that Omaha were laying Cat around the, the, the. It's not that bad. No, it's it's actually yeah. a very very good series. If you ever get a chance to pick it up, and you know, of course, you're 18. I don't want to advocate can, anybody under 18. Yeah, lines. Danny, you're not to read Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> she just passed away, didn't she? A couple months back. Who Omaha? The, the, no. <laughs> it's a comic book. <laughs> the woman, the yeah, woman who it created. Was, it was what Reed Waller and um, yeah, I, 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 I can't no, remember her name. I can't think of her name either. But yeah, you're right. She did pass away just recently. But I've always been a Chaikin fan, and all his women in his books have always been. It's such a unique s- style of drawing women. They're still sexy. Yeah. But it's not like the babelicious kind of sexy for Madame Hughes or anything. It's no, it's the everyday kind of sexy. Yeah, it's cool. Black Kiss does take it to the extreme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's I, a good story, though. I mean, yeah. it is, if, if you actually read it, it is yeah. a good story. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, Don't uh, just look at the pictures. Puts the adult in adult <laughs> comics. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever think, like, there are certain characters that no matter who draws them, they're sexy? Like, I always thought Zatanna and uh, Black Canary. Fishnets. Yeah. Uh, how about yeah, anything? Fishnets. Brian Boland. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody that he's drawn has always been uh, a nice flair. Even, like you said, characters that... You don't normally think of yeah. that uh, they've turned into uh, cheesecakes. For for me, Burn in his heyday when he was drawing like Sue Storm and She Hulk and the Fantastic Four. It was oh like, yeah. For a mainstream comic, they were he was you know drawing some nice looking women. They were Reese. Yeah. I wouldn't say that they were <clears throat> they were they were the cheesecake factor though. No, it, it, they he put them into you know situations where they were. You saw you know, more. Yeah, than it, just it wasn't. They, they weren't just eye candy. They were doing stuff in the story. Right, right. To me, he did. He took Sue Richards and took her from a, a second string character in the Fantastic Four to the most powerful character in the Fantastic Four, which she, where they have her now. But you know, he always drew nice looking women when they were standing there. I was like, whoa, my lord! It definitely made you stand up and take notice to Sue Richards. Mm-hmm. In, in between his art and the story, was uh, made her a. a a great character, especially uh, when he did the whole Malice story. Yeah, I think yeah. there you did get a little cheesecake with in the S and M outfit, yeah, the yeah. leather yeah. and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, ha- I have to say, it's funny because um, he gets flack for people always say that 
or not flack, but people always try to, you know, they say, oh, he's very respectful in, for, of women and characters, but he loves to dis, to make female characters villains. I mean, I know Dark Phoenix is a collaboration, but you look at Sue in Next Men, his female character, uh, one of the female characters went bad. Mm-hmm. In the Doom Patrol, they're a little bad. Uh, it's like all the, uh, and there, I, there were other ones too, and I'm like, yeah, what's that saying? Doesn't that say he's a bad girl? <laughs> so he's, I does I guess. He's got some know. issues? I don't know. Well, no, I, I, I wouldn't exactly say Mommy issues? Has <laughs> issues, but he likes he's a divorce a naughty. Well, he got, to me, the bad guy's usually the more powerful character and more interesting and more, you know, he usually has more meat That's a than some sugar of the heroes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I, I am a, a burn apologist. I'll, I'm open. I'll, I'll open <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, though. I mean, but and, he, he, you know, they are. the big, he, His bad guys are always so much more interesting. He is, and I've said it before, he's taken, say it again. like, Dr. Doom, <laughs> and he's turned him from a, a two-dimensional bad guy into a full-blown three-dimensional character. And that's, it's... I just think he's... All right, we get it, all right? It'll be an issue one. It'll be episode 100. We'll have that clip from you, okay? We, we waited for him. We actually waited for him to come. Yeah. Why? What was the second part of his email? That I don't remember. To, I, I forget. I already it's, have it closed up. I, okay. He has something else. I don't remember what it was. Oh, about the, the comic book show. Comic book oh, comic book okay. Yeah. okay. It's Golden Eagle Comics in Reading, Pennsylvania, located in the Fairground Square Mall. Woo! Sitting in this room are three former employees. Yeah. Including a uh, assistant manager, I believe, right? And a manager. Well, yeah. and a manager. Don't, and manager. don't start. Yeah. I, I, I was a manager. <laughs> and John was the manager of the Do you the guys store. have your business cards framed in memory? Yeah. Business yeah. cards. Yeah, the ones that said Lem Foss, not owner. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have one that says John Duffy, assistant manager. Oh, oh yeah. wow. I never even got one of those. Wow. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you were bringing the store down from the inside. That's then I right. had to step in and uh, build it back up again. <laughs> yes, I was. That was our store for... I God. mean, there have been there have been other comic shops in Reading, but that's the one that's been around for so how many years? Survived 20, 20, 20 almost twenty years, yeah. nineteen 20, and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they just had their twentieth anniversary? Yeah. Was thought. it twentieth? Yeah. Oh, okay, then it's twenty. And it's bounced around in different locations in Reading, but uh, you know, most of us have followed it pretty faithfully. And even it expanded into two stores at, at for a period for of a time. Long time. Yeah. 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 yeah, and even even those of us that get a good chunk of comics mail order, I still go there and pick up stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure, we still visit. Still because you want to look at you want to look at the books on the shelf. There's yeah. some things you don't want to buy because you don't you would rather see it first and yeah. and, and um, or you just can't wait for the shipment to come so you got to go get it and read it right when it first comes out. Uh, his email asked if it was a cool place. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. totally cool. And it's gotten a lot better. Cause oh yeah. The store that it's in now is absolutely enormous. Mm-hmm. Almost yep. more space than they can properly fill, but yeah. that's yeah. fine. We'd rather have more yeah. than too little. Not like the first store in Fairgrounds, which was r- r- roughly the size of the room we're sitting in right yeah. now. Yeah, it was a whole normal. I'll tell you what, I cannot go in there for five minutes because there's people in there. We wind up talking for hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the point where I have to almost just order the comics or else I'm going to piss away a whole day in there. Yeah. That's what we used to do. I used to get Wednesday afternoon off and get there about 1 o'clock in the afternoon and stay till about 6. Now, the, my worst story, and I think, Jamie, you will agree with me, the worst ever experience at the comic shop was when it was in the the first location that it was in at Fairgrounds was this tiny, tiny little store that had no back door. You know, most mall stores have a, have a door that goes out into a hallway or to outside or something. This had no back door. So there was only one way in, and that was through the entrance. Well, Jamie and I are in there one Saturday afternoon, and there was a little restaurant place next to us, a little deli thing. Oh, yes. And some guy is walking along with story. one of those gigantic garbage things on a, on wheels and inside of it are vats of used grease yep. from the french fry trap or whatever like renderings and, and it oh. smells like like sewage yep and those cart things have three wheels and he's pushing it and it got like stuck on one of the tiles and he just keeps pushing it and it just goes right over and uh. like these like i don't know it must have been like 20 or more gallons of this sludge spilled into the mall directly in front of us and it covered the entire wit- opening of the store and the entire width of the passageway in the mall now luckily that we had a little strip that like a little metal strip where the gate closed so the the sewage didn't come into the store, the store. but it, it collected right along the edge it stank like you were 
dunked in a thing of sewage. Yep. And we were standing there. We, we couldn't get out. And, of course, no one could come in the store because no one could walk through the mall because it's like it was like two inches thick throughout the entire area uh, of the mall. Yeah, it's like a wing of the mall. It's, a, it's Imagine like one wing that's where we were, and you couldn't – it was like across the entire that entire wing. Nobody there could walk no back No way to get out. So we were standing there, and after we started to gag, we actually got Lysol, and we're just spraying it in front of our faces so that we could not throw up yep. because it took every – It was that bad. It was oh. so mm-hmm. horrible, and mm-hmm. this took them like at least two hours to clean up. Yep. Uh, Didn't yep. you use any like image books or something to help stop <laughs> up the grease? This was before image. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was so – This is when image books were worth something. That's all. <laughs> it was I'm so like, bad. Yeah. yeah oh, my God. Yeah. I had a story from when – he used to have the store in on Fifth Street where the original location was. Mm-hmm. I was in there on a Saturday, and he had one of his first employees working there, Anson. Oh, and I remember Anson. Anson. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know Anson, yeah. it's, that's a whole story in itself. Yeah, but I was gonna say we, that's he was in show. there working the one day, and I knew known him for quite some time and, and was speaking with him, and there was this young kid in the in the store shopping around. Well, in comes this guy who has a beef with Anson about sending – Sending, I guess, his girlfriend flowers. Anson sent this other guy's girlfriend flowers oh, or something. Man. So this whole kind of like argument and this thing, you know, is going down, you know. So you know, make a long story short, he left, and wanted he wanted to fight Anson. And Anson's like, no, I ain't doing that. I'm on my job right now. You know, you come back at seven o'clock when the store closes, different story, whatever, you know. And the guy left. So I thought that was the end of it. So me and this little kid are in the in the walkways, you know, looking at stuff. <laughs> This guy comes flying back in the door, jumps over the freaking counter. These guys are rolling around the whole goddamn store, <laughs> tussling, you know. And and I'm and doing. Anson's I'm, not a small guy. No, no, no you know. I he, mean, I, no. and uh, and they're just rolling around and and not stopping. And <laughs> shit's getting knocked over. And I'm like, uh oh, you know, what do I do? So I was like, I, I first took this kid and moved him to the back of the store because they were more, you know, confined to the front area. And then it finally broke up, and 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 the guy left. And but. Like you know, you just kind of don't forget those kind of That's things. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call the cops on two like thirteen-year-olds who were stealing baseball cards, and their their dad came into the store and was like yelling at the cop, "Arrest them! Put the handcuffs on! Book them! Take them downtown! <laughs> throw them in the cell overnight! Arrest them!" I want them to learn their lesson. And the kid's like, Dad, no. <laughs> And the cop's like, really, sir? It's only $20 of the material. We can't really waste hey, the that's poli- a good dad. department's time with all yeah. that paperwork and everything. And he's like, I don't care. Do it. <laughs> we need more dads like that in this country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was interesting. And I, did, I had a guy um, come in. It was ridiculous. At the time, I was, I was at the Penn Avenue store, and I was, I don't know, I was 19 or 20 or something. And this kid was like 14 or no, it was a little, he was a little older than that. He might have been 16 or 17. He was like, somehow he knew my brother or something. And for some reason, he didn't like me. <laughs> and he came into the store with his two goons, and they were, like, trying to start something with me. I'm like, I'm, I'm working at the store. You know, like, what the hell are you doing? I'm 20 years old. Just leave, you know, go about your business, you know? And they, get, they got up all my face and started yelling at me. So I'm, I'm trying. I'm like, okay, you have to leave now. You know, you have to exit the store. That's it. I'm going to call the cops on you, you know, for trespassing. And and so I'm, like, ushering him out the door. And right as I get him outside, the guy hauls off and punches me in the face. <laughs> so then I punched him back, and then they ran off. And it was like, what the hell was that? I just was in a fist fight in the store. You, know? you didn't know Anson? No, oh, okay. I did <laughs> And then there was the other time. This was great. It was Saturday afternoon. I was all by myself. And it was a beautiful spring day, and so there's no one in the store. It's a Saturday afternoon. Everyone's outside doing stuff. <laughs> and so I'm sitting on the front steps reading a comic because it's beautiful outside. I don't want to be inside, and there's no one in the store. And there's a Redner's across the street, and this, this big old jalopy of a car pulls halfway into the Redner's parking lot and stops. And there's, like, some smoke coming out of the engine of the hood. So the guy gets out of his car and walks over and, like, gets on the payphone at Redner's. And I'm sitting there watching. The car exploded. It literally <laughs> lifted, like, five feet off the ground and came crashing down engulfed in a giant ball of fire. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, of course, the fire department came and everything. It was like, well, fireworks. Hey, great. Cool. Yeah. You didn't grab, the, like, a Superman T-shirt and pretend that you were going to go save the day. No, I, okay. I just sat just there and watched it burn. <laughs> no, he was afraid it might have been Zarathos or something. <laughs> yeah, one, so. one of my favorite stories, and this, this is, thank God, Bill Vita was there to 
to back me up on this story. It's how I got my my absolute favorite business card. Um, these two <laughs> these two great looking women come walking in, and that's a rarity in any comic store. And I had seen the one before. I knew I knew of her profession, and uh, we. Uh, we got. We started talking. They were talking about movies, and they came up to the counter. And she, the girl, bought her books. And her friend was with her. And we're like I said, we're talking movies. Talking. Uh, it was actually uh, Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. So we're talking about it. This guy, I see this guy come walking over across the mall from the Radio Shack. He walks up to the girl that this girl was with and says, "You don't have to give me your phone number, but I bet the guy over there I would come over here and ask you for your phone number." The girl goes, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do you one better. I'll give you my business card. So she whips out this business card, a picture of her stark naked. <laughs> now, we have a strip club <coughs> around here called Al's Diamond Cabaret. Here she was the headliner that week at Al's Diamond Cabaret. So she must have seen me looking at the business card. So I'm, I'm mentally telling, trying to get Bill, who's in the back of the store, to come up to the front of the <laughs> store. Because right. nobody's going to believe me. Come up to the front of the store. He does. He, she turns to me, she says, do you want one of these cards? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she gives me her business card. I still carry my wallet the day I bring it out. And I, I tell people about it, but, you know, the day that two strippers were in the store and, and talked to me like I was a cool guy. Mm-hmm. What gets me is the fact that you're looking at a picture of a naked woman and you're thinking of somebody else, a guy, to come up to the front of the store to look at this as well. <laughs> yeah, well see, because see, nobody's going to believe me. That's this one that's like, yeah, okay, Jamie, yeah, you paid her to give you that card. Yeah, right. So... But that was like, that was one one of my favorites, and just you know all the people that we met. I mean the the, the friendships that we've developed, and this yeah. whole thing right here probably wouldn't be possible oh, without that. Yeah, that's exactly. Exactly. I was just going to say that, that yeah. my, that's my cool story is that I met all of you there. It's like talking and six degrees of Golden Eagle is yeah. what it really is. Yeah. So actually, despite what Alex says, it's really Golden Eagle that brought us all together, not him. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Alex was his Greek. You know, complex. It yeah, revolves the, around him. The Wednesdays that we used to spend, the one day oh. we spent eight, I, I spent eight hours, oh, yeah. I guess, and yeah. people came in and out. And I was, I just, it's not I'm hard still to do. There. Oh, it's easy to spend four or five hours yeah. with the rotating people coming yeah. in and out and starting up, drawing up new conversations and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I would work from nine <laughs> in the morning and my shift was over at three, four in the afternoon and then I would be there until nine at night <laughs> as you guys would come in. I would yep. never go home and have dinner or anything. That's yep. so crazy. And I lived, I lived in Birdsboro at the time, which is, what, 20 minutes away? Mm-hmm. And I would drive, I drove from work, which was like in Boyertown, past Birdsboro, up to the comic store and would stay there until I absolutely had to leave to get home to, to eat dinner at some point. And then drive twenty minutes back down there because it, it was it was so much fun. It was enjoyable. I actually I actually quit my job at that rental car place because the guy took away my Wednesday afternoon day off. Oh my god! He's like, and it was kind of like there was a bunch of other stuff going on, but he's like, yeah, we can't let you have off Wednesday afternoons. And I'm like, what? All right, you just quit the Bye. straw that broke the camel's back there because I really don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, we got another um, <clears throat> excuse me movie news uh, segment from Mr. Fusion. Cool. 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 So uh, I'm gonna play that for you right now. We got six minutes of deadline, Jonah. We need page one. Everybody loves a hero. Golly, Miss Wayne, how can you tell great stories? I believe there's a hero in all of us. Good reporter doesn't get great stories, Jimmy. Robbie, there's your page one. Good reporter Next makes them great. great. Don't be writing this stuff in the newspaper. Welcome to another edition of Movie News. I'm your host, Tom Martinek. Our first story comes to us from SuperheroHype.com, where they had an interview with Fantastic Four director Tim Story. The director says there are some extra scenes involving Ben Grimm and Alicia, as well as some special effects scenes in the DVD to be released December 13th. Rumors were running rampant on the internet that Jessica Alba would not be returning to the Fantastic Four 2 movie, but ComicBookMovie.com reports that the actress is committed to reprising her role as the Invisible Girl uh, despite being signed to play the lead role in the latest TV to movie film, I Dream of Jeannie. Bruce Campbell's heading for another cameo in Spider Man 3. During an appearance at the Maryland Horror Find weekend, he told the crowd, quote, I can't really say who I'm playing, but because you're all here and I think you can keep a secret, I'll be up front. I'm going to be Spider Man. In related Spider-Man news, composer Danny Elfman will not be returning to write the score for the third film. 
And despite all my contacts, I have yet to be able to find out when Spider-Man 2.5 DVD will be released. But word on that as soon as I find out. Slice of Sci-Fi reported that several unsubstantiated rumors were floating around that Crispin Glover is top of the list of actors to play the Joker in the Batman Begins sequel. The film's producer, Charles Roven, is denying that they even know who the next villain will be. He says the nod to the Joker in the current movie was, quote, our way of tipping our hats to the very first Batman movie, end quote. SuperheroHype.com reports that the Batman Begins DVD will hit the shelves October 18th. This two-disc deluxe edition DVD is packed with spectacular bonus features such as behind-the-scenes look at the making of the film, additional information on key characters and weapons that were not revealed in the film, a look at various incarnations of the Dark Knight, an exclusive collectible DVD comic book, and much more. There were conflicting rumors running wild about whether Katie Holmes will be back to play Bruce Wayne's love interest in the next sequel. Page6.com is saying that an unnamed source claims that, quote, she won't be in the sequel, the next romantic interest will be a much stronger actress, end quote. Already signed for the sequel are Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, and Gary Oldman. In fact, the only one who hasn't signed on for the sequel is director Chris Nolan. Let's hope they sort that out real soon. And finally, we have news about three new additions to the X-Men 3 cast. Professor X's old love interest, Dr. Moria McTaggart of the Mutant Research Center on Muir Island, Scotland, will be played by Olivia Williams. Williams is known by sci-fi and fantasy fans for her appearances in films like The Sixth Sense and Peter Pan. It's also been confirmed that actor-director Bill Duke of Predator fame will be playing a politician on the president's cabinet, and that Michael Murphy will be playing Angel's father, Warren Worthington Sr., Well, that's it for this edition of Movie News. But before I hand the show back over, I'd just like to congratulate the CGS team on their 50th podcast, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them for letting me be a part of it. And now, back to the geeks. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Cool. I love Always his segues. well done. Yes. Mm-hmm. Love his segues. Very well I, I produced. Could, I could have those segments like every six hours <laughs> yeah. if only he wasn't working for a living. <laughs> well, when we get to that level where we make a living off of this, we will bring him in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he can do the special effects version of yeah. the comic geek speak cartoon. <laughs> the CGI version. <laughs> I was surprised to hear him say that uh, Morgan Freeman did re-up for the second movie because they did. They said that interview, yeah, that one where he specifically said himself he wasn't, he wasn't coming back. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Is, anyone, is anyone upset with uh, Katie Holmes not coming back? Hell yeah. no. You know what? I was thinking the other day. Getting the mic. I was I was thinking the other day. <laughs> See, <laughs> nice. How much better that's uh, you know what? I'm not wearing a headphone, so <laughs> fuck you all. So. Oh! oh! <laughs> There's a quarter. quarter. <laughs> yeah, I got your quarter right there. Uh, it's just that I don't really f- – she's cute, but I don't really f- find the sex appeal in her that I – Yeah, but you have to see her naked in that one movie. You know? Oh, I did. I yes. did. It's not bad, but – Sex appeal goes up a lot there. <laughs> well, nudity in most women. Are. But you're never going to see that in Batman, so. Yeah. Nah, I, you I, need you need if you're gonna do a female love interest, you have to be interesting and and. Why you don't need a female yeah, love interest? I was just gonna love say I, I'm pretty happy God, without one in the next. Stop movie. it! It doesn't have to be a relationship. It can be an interest. I mean, that's always been portrayed in all the issues throughout the Batman comics. There's always been that ambiguity or ambiguity. I'm sorry, or you know something poor laying to that. You know because there's always a female character they always add into it. So it's always something that doesn't have to be a relationship or something that could lead into a relationship, but there's always an interest there. There's always a female character. Eh, skip it for one. Yeah, let's make him gay. <laughs> yeah. there, they, they did. It's called Batman Forever and Batman Rock. <laughs> and Batman. <laughs> Rubber nipples. <laughs> bat crotch, bat crotch. And yeah, that's for 100. What? Oh, oh. Shit. <laughs> We're going to blow up. Ah. We're <laughs> done already. <Stop> cover. <laughs> bomb's coming to bomb. <laughs> Bing. Good to know 50 episodes and we're still going yeah, we're strong. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it yeah, wouldn't be fun without that. Professionalism. Hopefully right by up, episode 100 we don't have to update. Oh, uh, Peter. What would be an episode without stumping your ass? It's going to be 50 questions he has to get, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we have a special listener. Uh, Book. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, <laughs> guys. My name's Jim. I post on the forum as Bully Dogs, and I have an anniversary edition of Stump the Rios. Cool. All these questions are references to previous discussions that have been talked about in the previous 49 episodes. <laughs> First question. You guys have been harping on pronunciations of names such as Perez and Raz al Ghul. The most butchered name in comics is Nick Ciaz Pitlick, the demonish imp that torments Superman. Here's your curveball. Please spell Nick Ciaz Pitlick, but please spell the Earth 2 counterpart's name. <laughs> Oh, damn it. <laughs> I even wrote the man, name down. Peter started before, frantically yep. writing, man. Uh, Earth one is M X Y Z P T L K. Earth two is let's see, it's Mixius Pitalik. Um, <laughs> my brain hurts just uh, from hearing the question. Yeah. My answer is Y. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll ha- I'll say M X Y T Z P L K. The answer. It's got some mix, 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 mix. The Earth 2 counterpart's name is spelled M X Y Z T P L K. The Earth 1 counterpart's name is M X Y Z P T L K. It's two letters switched. Yep. Okay, second Dyslex- question. Dyslexia. You guys mentioned that you named some of your pets after famous uh, animals in the comics. When I was a kid, I named my first dog after the secret identity of Superman's dog, Crypto. Please name Crypto's secret identity pre-crisis when he was traveling the countryside with Detective Ed Tracy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't I even do know, know he I had do one. I know this. Yeah, I do because in the Who's Who entry, they show him with a spot, and I'm thinking it is spot, but then there's a part of me thinking that it's not spot, but I'm gonna say it is. All right. By the way, you owe the box a quarter so far. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Crypto's secret identity was Capper, spelled K-A-P-P-E-R. In fact, he had a retractable cape and also put a brown spot on his back to hide his identity. Stop that for a Okay, third. I am going to, I'm going uh, <laughs> uh, to, I'm going to debate that himself. because there might have been more than one secret identity, and I'm pretty sure in the who's who, it's not Capper, I know that. So, that one's kind of iffy, you know, because if it's got more than one answer... No. So we have I'm gonna, an official I'm protest on question, question two. In Legion of Superheroes, after the five-year gap, it was revealed that Element Lad's girlfriend, Sean Aaron, was actually just acting. Sean Aaron was acting as a female. In fact, it turned out that Sean Aaron was Sean Aaron, a guy who was taking a drug to become a female so that he could have a relationship with Element Lad. Please name the drug that Sean Aaron was taking so that he could be a she. I think it's called Profen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a drug you're taking. <laughs> Sean Aaron was taking Profen. Woo! <laughs> Thanks so much for this opportunity, and I really enjoyed listening to your podcast. Good luck on the next 50 episodes. Thanks, and have a good evening. Was that the lead? Uh, was that the lead-in <laughs> drug before ecstasy? Is that? <laughs> that's I got funny. one, so that's yeah, good. So you owe fifty cents of the box. Oh, fifty cents, that's possibly a quarter. I don't have change. Possibly a quarter, yeah, because I got to look that up. <laughs> that's a pretty dangerous drug when it makes you a male into a female yeah. without taking a drug. Yeah. <laughs> Wacky. Uh, that's not nice. Well, how do you no. feel when Wonders. you're dating the person and you couldn't tell that? <laughs> I don't know. Ask Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Uh, Hey, well, this time, uh, and, and Hugh Grant, right? Yeah, and Danny Bataducci. No, Hugh Grant. Oh, that was an actual yeah, woman. That was an actual that was woman. Right, yeah. Danny Bataducci and, Just a and Eddie Murphy were the, the ones that got punked. Man. <laughs> oh. You know what? Um, now that I think about it, he did ask what was his name while he was going around with that lieutenant. So, yeah. so maybe he was specific, specific for that yeah. lieutenant. Yeah, so I'll let that go. I owe 50 Well, let's continue the trivia, and this time... Here's one for all of us. Oh. Mm-hmm. TV Trivia Podcast Special Stump the Geeks <laughs> Edition, Episode Number Two. That's the Muppet Show. Welcome 
while you guys may not have watched Land of the Lost, I know some of you at least have seen The Muppet Show. So let's get right to the questions. Good luck. Question number one. What's the name for the pink creatures that appear in the Menomina sketch? Snoth. Hey, hey, I think it's Snoth. Hey, here comes Menomina. Here comes the, the, the Shane Star Wars <laughs> trilogy. I think they're Snoth. They are called Snouts. 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 Question Snouts. number two. What is the name of Waldorf's wife? Uh, oh. She looks like Statler. Astoria. Astoria. I didn't even know he had a wife. Uh -huh. I didn't either. I would be willing to bet. I'm, I'm not. I'm I, I think you're one. right. Makes sense. Her name is Astoria. All right. right. Question number three. Often on the Muppet Show, you would see a full-sized, fat, blue, floppy-eared monster. Fog. What was his name? Wow. That's a janitor guy? No. 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 no, he's really big. He's, he's bigger than Sweeney. He was Sweeney's. in the opening scene when they were on the bottom. Yeah. Two out of three. His name was Thog. Nice. Oh, bonus question. Oh, bonus. Name the only person to have hosted the Muppet Show whose parent also hosted. Ooh. Candace, Candace Bergen, I think. Okay. I think wow. Edgar Bergen did it. Yes, yes, he did. And she was just on too. Yeah. And Jamie. The answer is Candace Bergen. Wow. Sure it is, of course, Edgar Bergen, who also appeared with his puppets, Charlie, Charlie McCarthy and yep. Mortimer, Mortimer Snurd. Snurd. Yep. That's it for this time. I hope you did well. Congratulations on your 50th episode, and here's hoping for another 50. See you all next time. We aced it. Yeah. Two out of three. Wow. No. No. no that's yeah, Jamie got two. I got two. Yeah, snarf thing oh, was that's, close enough. Oh, yes. Okay. Snarf, 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 potato, potato. What the hell? Well, I'll remember that next time. I'm it's it's <laughs> NS. <laughs> it's NS if you would have said matter. caper and not capper, then we would have given <laughs> yes. it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Spot. <laughs> 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 At least I know what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, that makes it. Fun. Thank you. Well, for we did that. A that was fun. Thanks. We did a hell of a lot better yeah. than Land of the Lost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, I, I just went to that TV trivia thing, and that's that's a lot of fun. I had fun with like the Mash one. They did WKRP one and uh, Night Court one. I, I oh, pretty much hate those. Ooh, I you know David Akers, right? Yeah. That's his name. Yeah. 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 Cool. TV trivia podcast.blogspot.com yeah, yeah. I, I, so. I do have a question who, who is the girl making the who's the girl oh, saying probably that? his wife or something wife or daughter I, it's just I, that, that voice is just that's a neat voice stimulating no yeah. it's mesmerizing <laughs> mesmerizing I didn't say that I didn't offer that voice a hand in marriage for that he wants to marry it is yeah. neat. I love I like her <laughs> Jamie's got a case of rings here yeah his right? <laughs> <laughs> well this one's for I get a this <laughs> one's for <laughs> David Aker's wife this one <laughs> Okay. You gonna be the first comic geek Mormon? This was for me <laughs> when I beat the shit out of Shane. This one's <laughs> yep, funny. kill y'all. <laughs> we got another uh bit sent in to us. Uh Lena Taylor from the I Read Comics podcast, who graced us with her presence in the opening, has also sent us in a segment uh, called T V Talk. So uh we'll play that now. <laughs> Hey, it's Lena with TV Talk. You know, there was a time when there was no Cartoon Network. When I was a kid, we had only three networks, and we had to watch whatever they put on there, which was usually reserved for Saturday mornings. The very first cartoon that I can remember watching was Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse. And if you've ever seen it, you know how bad that was. <laughs> it was not a good time for cartoons on TV, but things are much better now. There's a Cartoon Network. You can watch anything you want to on the Cartoon Network 24 hours a day whenever you want it. I know that most of you read comic books religiously. Some of you watch TV, but I'm here to say you should watch more cartoons on TV because, to make a good metaphor, if you want to read a good comic book, it's kind of like drinking a really good Guinness Stout. It's chewy, it's deep, it's very satisfying and very fulfilling. Cartoons on TV, superhero cartoons on TV, they're kind of like light beer. They taste great, but they're much less filling, and therefore you can have more of them. So I say watch more cartoons on TV. On the Cartoon Network, you have a selection of the superhero ones like Teen Titans, Justice League Unlimited, Superman, Batman, all of those things are great. But I would also say watch some of the other ones that you might not think are good, because they are good. 
There's something like The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. This is a show in which the Grim Reaper comes to live with two very obnoxious children because he lost a limbo contest. Where else can you find plotting like that? It's a great show. You already know about Powerpuff Girls, so I would say watch that. What about something like Mucha Lucha, which is a show about kids as Mexican wrestlers? You won't see that anywhere else. I would also <laughs> no. say Teen Titans is one of my most favorite things on the Cartoon Network. It is not like the Teen Titans in the comic books. It's a weird manga Japanimation version of it, but it has a kick-ass theme song by Puffy Amiyumi who are two insane Japanese pop stars who also have their own show. And even as I say that, I realize that saying insane Japanese pop stars is completely redundant. <laughs> so let's say watch that. You can switch over to Nickelodeon as well. I know most people think of Nickelodeon as only for kids, but there's a lot of great stuff. I don't want to talk too much about SpongeBob, one of my most favorite shows. By the way, SpongeBob is not gay. It's his neighbor, Squidward, who's gay, just so you know. Another great show on there is The Fairly Odd Parents, which is directed by Butch Hartman, which has a lot of really funny superhero references in it, so I highly recommend that. There are also things like Invader Zim, which I know a lot of people are, are fans of, and even something like My Life as a Teenage Robot is pretty funny. On the three major networks, there's not much to talk about unless you like Power Rangers, which I don't really care for. There is far too much weird manga on TV, both on the regular channels and also on the cartoon networks. I don't get things like Gundam and Samurai Jack and Yu-Gi-Oh. They're just bizarre. Um, if you understand them, good for you, but I don't get them. It's like watching Speed Racer, but with a lot less intelligible plots. Um, if you really want to go for the classic stuff, there's always Looney Tunes. There's Bugs Bunny, there's the Chuck Jones show, there's a lot of really good Looney Tunes animation, and if we're going to go back to that drink metaphor, watching Looney Tunes, watching a Chuck Jones cartoon is like a fine champagne. So just be glad that you live in a time when there's digital cable, and not like when I was growing up when we had to watch TVs that were powered by steam, by candlelight, <laughs> because it was tough back then. You guys have it easy now. So in closing, I'd just like to say, watch more cartoons on TV, because... Really, is there such a thing as watching too much television? I don't think so. Okay, right. that was cool. Lane is going to yeah. probably do a semi-regular bit for our show, so cool. a little cross-promotion in the podcast world. Here, here, here for the kudos to the <coughs> Chuck Jones. And oh, yes, absolutely. That. That's my Although, all-time favorite cartoon. I did see a commercial for that new futuristic oh, bunch no, of bunny no, no. crap the other day on WB. No. It was last Saturday when I taped Batman. Children, don't bother. boycott that. <sighs> don't yeah, bother. Do not watch that. Please. It's called... Shit? L Looney? No, it's, it was, not, like it's not the original title. It's, I think it's a little different it's Spelled now. differently. I forget. I forget. Fucked it up was, shit? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I keep Definitely saying, why don't. do we wait for him? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and I've tried watching Mucha Lucha. I just can't do it. No, there's some of that stuff that yeah. I just can't even get through. What's that one that uh, Johnny Phantom or something like that? That's on Danny Phantom. Danny, Danny Phantom. Phantom. Yeah. Danny Phantom. I never checked that out. I used um, to watch Johnny Bravo and uh, yeah. and SpongeBob and Ed Ed and Eddie are cool. They're funny too. What's what's I the? What's they don't the, Ed and Eddie makes me because the animation is like shaky. Yeah, kind of, that that drives me nuts. I yeah, they're funny. I, can't shit watch I, I mean, they are just that. hilarious. Does anyone else work a full time job? <laughs> <laughs> just kind of. No. I get time to watch like three shows a week, and it's like you guys are just rambling off all these different. <laughs> I'm with you, Matt. I, I don't watch any. Of I don't sleep in with quotes. Wah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I work a full time job. <laughs> 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 Look at him. I just got a quick question here. Uh, yeah. This is kind of like to Shane. Don't bring uh, up your ping pong club, man. No, no, no. no. Okay. Right. Ping pong oh. club is awesome. Oh. Ping pong club forever. But, uh, I am. I, I no, this is uh, still more question. Like, we were talking about this before about the Looney Tunes and the classic Looney Tunes cartoons and how they either won't show certain episodes anymore on TV or they've censored them. Mm -hmm. uh, like. We talk a little bit about that. I mean, yeah, you, you know, and you, all the people you listening, you know, what are your opinions on yeah. should they censor this well, stuff? Should it be so PC? Absolutely Anybody, not. Should it be shown, you know, the way yeah. it was intended? Yeah, I mean, because you, you won't, like a gun will go off in a, in a face, of course, you know. And you get Daffy that. does get blown, you know, his face blown yeah, off. Yeah, his right. beak is whacked around. And, and they and won't show that. They'll, charcoal they'll, they'll black. cut it and yeah. they'll go somewhere else. And, yeah. Well, they, my, do they my, have Yosemite Sam saying, great horny toad? Great horny toad? Probably not. I don't know. My biggest beef is uh, actually some of the Tom and Jerry ones with uh, Tom's uh, owner or the maid. She's the maid. She's the maid. Yeah. It, yeah. it drives me nuts. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I, 
as a kid and even now, I never took it in the context that it that other people are taking it now. I just, oh, okay, it's somebody beating Thomas with a broom. That's all there is to it. Right. I mean, I never thought they of it. They changed their voice. They also did. I know one time I was watching, I think it was the one, it was like a winter episode and he was listening to a scary story on the radio or something like that. And at the end of it, the house blew up and the radio is still talking. Don't yeah, you believe that. it. Because he comes up with like a black face. Yeah. Yep. They actually cut that section out of it. Mm-hmm. That there, drives me crazy. There's another one with, with Tom and Jerry. I forget exactly what happens, but it was with a, one of those bird baths that flipped around and landed on his head, and he goes down into a uh, position oh, like he like was Asian, uh, like a Chinese yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. Get that he as comes well. up and he, go, he goes off to his side. Yeah. This place show going crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, the same, it's the same thing with Bill Cosby taking the little rascals and, and not showing them, yeah. you know, because of all the, mm-hmm. the oh, buckwheat really? references. Yeah. And, well, what and about, didn't they cut out all gang. the uh, Speedy Gonzales as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't see him. You Speedy don't Gonzales Speedy and Gonzales Slopo, anymore? I don't think you, even Slopo if you do Rodriguez. see Speedy, you don't see Slopo Rodriguez anymore. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. That is. I bet you they'll show the French, the Sylvester, all the time, though. <laughs> and, and Pepe Le Pew. I mean, that's what I meant. That's yeah. what I meant, Pepe Le Pew. And yeah, it's just I, like, I mean, there's no reason. No. There's I, DVDs coming but out now. By so doing that, yeah, are the DVDs uncut, like those I, collections I think of so. Looney Tunes? I'm pretty sure they are uncut. Should be. Isn't and it, I saw I saw the Tom and Jerry ones, and I was going to pick them up, but again, I don't want them to be uncut. I don't want, I don't want them to be cut. Right. Uh, Bottom you, line, you, you like them uncircumcised. Do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I We're going to put that kind of a metaphor. Yeah, I want the whole thing, man. <laughs> oh, I want the tip. <laughs> <laughs> There's a clip going to be used in episode down. 100. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Shane, I was a little bit concerned now that I know you want to get a tattoo around your lips that says insert here. Oh, <laughs> now we're definitely going <laughs> over the edge. Now, I, I, bottom line for, for me is the fact that you even have to have this freaking discussion yeah, that you right. have it's censored crazy. Looney Tunes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Speedy it's so, Gonzalez, how is that offensive? I mean – because it's well same thing with it's the same thing as the maid and tom and jerry and it's the same thing with any other references to any other race it is a stereotype and they no race wants to be stereotyped because then they're feeling you're being racist towards that race what uh you know all the white people are stereotyped because they go to work with a briefcase and the blood and the woman stays home and cooks a nice meal i mean that's stereotyping so we can't watch leave Leave it to beaver like leave it to beaver stereotypes White America, well, family white family in the 50s. it doesn't matter. White people don't matter. It's, it's. I, know. Well, I mean, I, you know, the Speedy Gans. I, I can't, you know. I mean, I've lived in Mexico. I have an adoptive Mexican family. For God's sakes, Jamie met the guy. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, if you know, I can tell you that there's nothing offensive about Speedy Gonzalez. It just pisses me off. I mean, that's how they talk. You know, Mexicans who speak English. Most of them talk with that accent. I mean, that's why it's in the cartoon because right. that's what you hear. Same thing with like Foghorn Leghorn, uh, I mean, down on the farm kind of yeah. talking. Yeah. Yeah. The you know? whole thing is just preposterous. It's, and you know what? If, if they wouldn't bring attention to it, that's kids right. wouldn't pay attention that's exactly to it. Right. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't think, oh, okay, my dad said this is offensive, so now it's going to be in my head saying it's offensive. Well, it's yeah. just a cartoon. Just watch it and enjoy it. Didn't they try to censor the Three Stooges because that's too violent now and they don't want kids slapping each other? Stuff? Oh, that's goddamn ridiculous. But yeah. it's like what we talked about before. But yet the parents will take their kid to go see Shrek. Yeah, and how oh, yeah. Ma- how many yeah. innuendos yeah. And, and sexual references are in that, mm-hmm. and just downright you know vulgar things here and there. But it's a know. cute cartoon movie for yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Parents are. I just mean, all crazy. of us in this room watch all those cartoons, and none of us are racist. Nope. None of us are anything Not like absolutely. that. My parents were very very proactive in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> very. Proactive. I hate every fucker. I, I was going to say I'm not racist. <laughs> I hate everybody. <laughs> My parents are very proactive. It's a cartoon. And if they, they would even say, if we ever see you drop something on your sister's head, you will be hurt. You know, you're going to get <laughs> yeah, in trouble. You're going to get your ass whipped. Do not drop stuff on your sister's head. Yeah. You just gotta, they never even needed, needed to tell me that. Yeah, I understood. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, the one yeah, time I, I tried oh, to build a rocket to get after the Roadrunner that my parents <laughs> said, maybe <laughs> you should start watching it yeah. a little bit. That damn Acme company. I, wanted, I went to Acme and <laughs> they don't, yeah, yeah, all they, they had was food. Rockets. It was all they didn't food. have anything. It's the rea- but see, what kills me is... None of those parents react until after something happens to right. their child. Yeah. Exactly. Then they want to try to pinpoint where it comes from, video games, cartoons, Oh, of course whatever. it's not them. Them. Comics. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Where, exactly. Exactly. Bottom line. Well, I, I, I was the reason for Herbie the Robot. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so you, you, you were going to light yourself on fire? And this is your yes, last. I did. <laughs> oh. I, f- I flew for like five seconds. Until <laughs> <laughs> you hit that bush. <laughs> Hey, let's read another email while we have some time here. This one is from Chris. He goes by Razor Killer on the forum. 
Okay. He says, hi, guys, occasional girl, and dogs. Love your show and have been working my way through the back catalog for a couple of weeks. Just got to the episode where you discussed downloading comics. Can't remember the episode number. I must confess that I have downloaded the odd comic here and there. Usually the first of a run or a comic I have never heard of. Recently I downloaded the first issue, Volume 3, of The Punisher. I had seen the film and decided to go and download an issue before I spent the money on a, spend the money I don't have on a comic. I like it and have decided to go and buy more of the stuff. I agree that having the comic on your computer opposed to having it in your hand is a no-brainer, but I think that doing it to tip your toe in the water, as it were, is a good idea. Just thought I'd give you my two pence. English here. Also, I like the advice you gave on how to go about selling buying things on eBay, and I've just purchased a set of Run Riddler Run, Batman vs. Predator, and a few Daredevil comics. Thanks for the advice, and keep helping us newbies. You're welcome. Yes. I don't know. I still don't download anything. I just. But at least I can see that you know, download an issue, see if you like it before you go spend the money on it. I mean, yeah. you could just as easily go to the store and look it up. But well, it, yeah, and not... I, and I've done the same thing with MP3 files. I've downloaded sure. songs, you know, tried to get the whole album, and only to have them be half crappy. But I've heard enough to say, you know what, I got to have that disc. Yeah. And I've bought multiple albums that way that I wouldn't have if I hadn't have downloaded it yep. first. So. There's there's merit in that. Holy hell! <laughs> we get these emails, man. It's, it's let's like do a, another one. It's like a Tolstoy. <laughs> yeah, this one's from Matt uh, Sommer in Racine, Wisconsin. Says, Guys, been listening for a few weeks now. Ever since iTunes kickstarted my interest in the whole podcasting scene. I have been enjoying the cast for the most part. You're a good fill-in for my odd, for my old comic shop buddies I used to chat with and or geek out with from time to time. But there have been a few things re- recently that have gotten me riled up enough to chime in. Your show on indie comics had its heart in the right place, but was just woefully out of touch with a true state of independent comics. Granted, you can take the stance that anything not Marvel DC is indie, but I think this show definitely shows you need an indie geek on staff here. For me personally, I was a huge superhero nerd throughout the 80s, but spent most of the 90s buying only indie comics as I was a, as I was sick of the usual superhero stuff at the time. I understand that not everyone is an expert, but how can you do a show on indie comics without mentioning Love and Rockets by the Hernandez brothers? The rash of autobiographical comics by Chester Brown, Yummy Fur, etc., Julie Doucet, Matt, Joe Matt, Peep Show, and Seth, and Seth. Clyde fans, it's a good life if you don't weaken. What the hell? The Hilarious Hate by Peter Bagg, Paul Pope, even newer stuff. What about, oh, I don't know, Kirkman's The Walking Dead, Rucka's Whiteout, Craig Thompson's smash hit Uber novel Blankets, his award-winning Chunky Rice book. Anyone? Hello? Time to crawl out of the bat cave, guys. The list goes on and on. Well, we've covered Walking Dead now, damn yeah, it. Yeah, we've mentioned <laughs> Love and Rockets in the pre- another episode. Yeah. Not everybody can know everything, you yes. know? I mean, and we even we said try, in that episode, but, <laughs> yeah. we said, I know we were hitting too many superhero indies. We know that there are other indies out there, but we only know what we read. Right. All right? So stop being defensive. <laughs> yeah. Because we've, we've been getting that, you know, on the forum, too, every now and then. Those have just like, never been, I've ne- just never been into those. I mean, there's good I've stuff. I mean, that. I've read White Out and things like that, and, mm-hmm. and they're good stories. You've never such, read an indie book until you read Keith Giffen's March Hare. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Todd Amen. knows what, what I'm he talking said. about. <laughs> the gauntlet is thrown. Well, is, there's a reason why they're not in DC or Marvel. Oh. You've never read an indie book until you've read Identity Disc. Isn't that right, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. No, okay. I mean, he's right. I do actually want to read Craig, Craig Thompson's Blankets. I saw it. I, I, I think it won a, a number of awards, I think, and, and it looks good. I flipped through, and I was like, yeah, I definitely do want to read that. Um, and there's some other ones in there that, um, that yeah, I've I mean, I've, I've know, looked at them, but I just, I mean, good Lord, you talk about in-between issues. I mean, Peter Bagg's hate. One issue comes out a year, maybe, and that's a maybe. Um, it's just, I'd rather have a book that comes out each week, each month, I should say, than... Some of those, and I, I'm not, they just aren't my cup of tea. They, I've, right. I've tried to read them, and it's just a, a total, a different side of the comics, which is, is great. Think, and there's that it's for its niche, but I, I it's not you know, I think mine. for me personally, if I want to read a story that's not superhero-y or something like that, I read a novel. 
Yeah. You know, I read John Irving, who I think is the greatest American novelist, and I read the classics, and I read uh, my bookshelves are full Seuss. of books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Cat in a Hat, Horton, Green Eggs and Ham, Green Green Ham. Pop, Ham. You know. Hop on Pop. <laughs> oh, my one boy fish, loves two fish, red fish, blue fish. When I when I go to the visual element of comics, <laughs> I want to read superheroes and fantasy stuff. I mean, there are you know, I mean, I read some stuff. I read Cerebus and I, you know, Strangers of Paradise and stuff, and that's not this crazy fantastical fiction but for the most part i want to read exciting adventure stuff that's why i'm into comic books and now when i read a serious story i read a novel right it's just that's yeah. my preference there's nothing wrong with that and then mm-hmm. you know we got yeah some instead of instead of you know saying you know why why didn't you mention this well the obvious answer is because we don't know about it instead of doing that tip us off to something yeah you know, I'm, I'm all for that. It. Yeah, send a geek of the day about yeah, rather it. Rather than uh, bitch, why don't you suggest something? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're well, lashing I, out. I, I know. I don't mean to lash out because that's yeah. not the point of it. But I mean, no. It sounded yeah. like he was kind of leaning towards that, though, kind of suggesting yeah, yeah. and bringing it, let yeah, him do an indie an thing. Offensive but, tone no. from this. One. And I will tell you one of the oh, neat yeah. things that we are working on right now, and I, I can let it a little. Oh out yeah, of the bag. absolutely. I was just going to say, top top shelf. Uh, publications has sent us a nice little uh, care package of some stuff for us to review. We've been passing it around. We've been reading it, and one of these shows we're going to do an all review show on what they send on us. So, yep. on top shelf. So we're you know we're we're trying to expand our horizons for you yeah. people. And the stuff that I've read so far has been excellent. Mm-hmm. I I admit that if I saw that on the shelf, I never would have bought it because again, it's not the kind of thing that catches my eye. But having read it, I say, wow, it's really good. Right. So. You know, I just. What's your opinion, John? I see you mulling something over over there. Well, I was going to say that. uh, I mean, I have read some of the slice of life kind of independence, and uh, I've read some really good ones. And then there's also, you know, a lot of junk. It's like you know, you have the whole independent section of previews, and really, you know, there's very few gems, you know, in in that whole section, unfortunately. but I like some of the ones that I like the best and that I'd be you know, happy to share with the rest of you guys. Things like Optic Nerve by Adrian Tomine. I mean, it's a well-written, well-drawn comic. I mean, again, it's one of those that, yeah, you're lucky to see two issues in a year. But when it comes out, it's very good. Um, I don't know if you already talked about uh, things like Ghost World and Dan yeah. Klaus's work. I mean, the, the Ghost World Eightball. graphic novel itself is is great and some of the other ones he's done have been really good um i mean even things like from hell you know it's, yeah we did talk about that you know alan moore but it's, you know totally independent work uh not put out by the big two right and uh i mean i've read some of the love and rocket stuff i like the early stuff i don't care for really what the hernandez brothers are are doing right now things like luba uh i just don't get the the huge boobs of Luba. That <laughs> it, <laughs> that sounds like the huge boobs of Luba. I mean, that, that's basically what the comic is. Indiana Jones it's a would woman, go get. You know? yeah. It's a woman, uh, an independent woman with gigantic breasts. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the, the easiest way to sum up that comic. But uh, <laughs> Matt, put it on your list. <laughs> hey, hey, anything more than a mouthful is a waste. So <laughs> oh, I thought it was a handful. <laughs> But I do have... Fed him the line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying to... I'm always out there trying to find, you know, good stuff. So, yeah, any suggestions, you know? I'll see. We answered, his, listen. we answered his call. He said we need somebody in there. Yeah. And, yeah. and we got shot. All right. He has another point here. He says, on a different tangent, I wanted to address some comments made a few shows ago by Brian. <laughs> I'm always getting myself Uh-oh. in trouble. <laughs> Who declared Marvel to be home to many awesome books and that those who don't agree were just wrong. Well, let me, give, let me give you my take on why I disagree. I have been out of the comic scene for a few years now, but I am slowly getting back into things. What I'm seeing is that Marvel is no longer the house of ideas, but rather the house of Bendis. What was great about Marvel in the past was a, ride, was a wide range of creators. You don't like so-and-so's writing, but many of the other books... Buy many of the other books, no big deal. With Bendis, he wields so much power over things that if you basically don't enjoy what he's doing, you are pretty much cutting yourself off from half the books in the Marvel Universe. Why that's, is he? That's overstating it. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I was going to say that. Why is he so obsessed with Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, for God's sake? Two Spider-themed heroes in the same team? Aunt May getting busy with Jarvis? What the... 
The New Avengers are the worst team of heroes since the Detroit era JLA. Yet it sells oh. because the, the legions of Marvel, I mean Bendis zombies, have already drunk the Kool-Aid. Same thing with the ultra-boring House of M so far. DC gives us identity crisis. Marvel comes up with another alternative reality. How fresh. Marvel is, an area, is in an era right now where the characters have become less important than the writer, and I just can't find a, a home there anymore. I want to read Spider-Man, not the guy from Babylon 5 Spider-Man. It feels to me like Bendis, JMS, and Kirkman basically write every book Marvel does. This just isn't right. I will give Marvel props for what I think is the best new book, Young Avengers. Brubaker's cap was great until the lame revelation in number six. Other than that, well, um, well, <clears throat> so how about that DC thing? Thanks for listening to my rant, Matt. Even as a DC guy, I'm going to say he's way overstating a lot of that stuff. He's generalizing. Bendis isn't writing half the Marvel books. No. Yeah. If you look on uh, uh, the website Newsarama dot com uh, they have a joe q segment on every friday right and the last installment of that he addresses uh that talk so to speak of bendis being in control of the whole marvel universe and and all that and he really addresses it in detail as far as who's all involved with what and how things are done so it's not uh, people are way overstating the fact that that uh, there's two people controlling the whole Marvel universe. It's not the it's not the case. Definitely not the case. Yeah, I mean Bendis writes four books that are in the Marvel universe. Well, one of them's the the ultimate book. So he's writing three is it three? Is it New Avengers? Pulse. Pulse. And, Daredevil. And, and Daredevil. Right. So he's only writing three books that Secret Wars. Uh well that was a special I mean a mini series. Five issue mini series and House of Well M. it was integral I guess into a lot of things. Well you, well, you go House of M, you go I mean he is putting a whole bunch of books out there, so I mean, he's and granted, not, I, all I the agree. books he's that, not writing everything. All the books that he writes tie in together there. very closely. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I will, I will admit that and, and freely. And but I mean, look at and, and Kirkman only writes one Marvel book, so yeah. it's not yeah. like you know, and it's Marvel team up, so it's almost completely disjointed from everything else. And then he just said that you know, Brew Baker's Cap is awesome, and 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 uh, all i mean there's a lot of books that have a different flair and then you got peter david now coming on spider-man and he was writing hulk for a little while i mean this is, these are books that are bringing back x factor very different yeah x factor is going to be you got mike millar on on miller, miller on miller. quarter miller on freaking wolverine which is a great run one of the best wolverine stories in a long time yeah. and i will agree it's not i'm not high on marvel right now but there's a lot of interesting things I think like I'm very interested after after being here and talking about it I'm very interested in Marvel team up especially after reading Walking Dead to see what his take is on those things um, yeah Marvel's not my cup of tea right now but it's a far cry from being absolutely crap um, there's a lot of good that's in Marvel right now it I just yeah. need to come back to it I feel that they the thing that I feel about Marvel is I think that they right now are trying too hard to compete with what DC is doing. So we're getting too much that's very hype-driven and... Less less punch. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes it doesn't always... It doesn't work out, or it should be that... that I don't know. I think they should focus their energies... Because he did say in that article, we, do, we are very interested in creating superstars sometimes more than characters. And, and that, that, I think, is... A wrong yeah. way to do things yeah, myself personally. Not, yeah, um, but I don't see anything wrong with having an idea and having a writer behind you because DC certainly doing that with well, Jeff Johns and Grant yeah. Morrison and right. Mark Waid. Um, but and, and even the DC guys, these these people that are mostly involved in everything going on, they were not stars until we as fans made them that way from reading their stuff for the past two or three right. years. Bendis just has a very strong following, so yeah. that's mm -hmm. why. And Joe Quesada would be stupid not to, you know. Absolutely. Tap into that. Absolutely. For, every, right. for every one guy that doesn't like Bendis, there are ten who love right. him. And yeah. I, I'm one of those. He has not disappointed me yet. I will right. say that. No, I, lo I love New Avengers. I'm not a big Avengers reader, but I picked up the book. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. But I do oh, wish, so. like, I, I wish they would just not feel that it's necessary to try to compete as much. Because now, I think where they once, like, throughout, you know, Marvel Knights, the you know, great, all that great stuff that came out of there. Yeah. And, now it feels like they're just trying to too hard. Uh, that I do wish they wouldn't do. I kind of, I'm kind of getting the feeling now that they're starting to segue into a different viewpoint of doing things. I think next year you're going to see a different flavor 
of what they're doing. It's not going to feel like a competition kind of thing that they're trying to, uh, you know, put out or or try to keep up with DC. I think they're really focusing on doing some good stuff and putting out good books again, which is what DC has done. Yeah. So I mean. Um, I think they're kind of focusing away from that. I, I know it seems all that way right now with House of M and all that. And, and, and to me, as a Marvel zombie, it is a competition piece. That's how I look at it. So I, I, I don't disagree with that. But I think I think they're really looking in the future from what things have been hinted towards is that they are looking at things differently. And and uh, I think you're going to see a, a, a different Marvel next year in 2006. Yeah. It's going to be one year back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think that's going to end our part A. So you'll have to go download the next file for part B, where we're going to have an incredible discussion. So please stay with us.